Uh, is it time? Is it go time? Uh, for you of you, for those of you out there, can you hear me? Can you see me? That's the big questions. Let's start off with those. Um, as we do a big warm welcome for everyone that's uh, joining us on this awesome Thursday. So first off in the messages, in the comments, chats, all right, Mario can hear me, but not see me. Anyone else having the same challenges? I can see in here, Chris, you win. Mario, you're slacking. Okay, boom, Mario got has it now. We're, we're good to go. Paul can hear and see, thank you so much. Perfect, perfect. Okay, and then the next big question is, Let's see if we can get the screen share to work. So uh, I'm going to share my screen. <laughs> okay, and Google decided, or sorry, Chrome decided to quit. So we're, we're back now. Hopefully, uh, can, let's start that over again. Can you hear me and can you see me? Fingers crossed, fingers crossed. Boom, okay, and let's try that screen share again. Okay. And so we've got, should have a small screen share and now we should have a large screen share and you should also have a video of me. Looking good, sounding good? Okay, let's give it just one second to confirm we're good. And okay, boom, let's do this. Let's have some fun. Um, all right, so my name is Jesse Lakes. I am the CEO and co-founder of Genius Link. Um, we've got uh, Mario Scholzky, our CMO on deck. We also have a uh, Matt from our uh, client success team, he's, uh, he's on board as well to kind of help moderate the questions. Anything that we're not gonna cover in the deck, uh, he can hopefully help answer for you. Um, but just wanna start off with a, a huge thank you for joining us. This is our first webinar. Um, it's, uh, it's gonna be fun. We have a ton of information. So uh, as I'm flying through this information, um, we are, just know that we are making a recording. Uh, also have put together um, some notes for you. So. If, uh, if you are one of those people that need or active listeners and, and want to kind of take notes as we go, we have this Amazon worksheet. So genius slash Amazon worksheet. If you want to go ahead and uh, grab that, that you can follow along. There's a bunch of different links, a bunch of uh, information already pre-populated in there for you, but it can help you take notes as well. Um, so we're going to be running through this. We're going to be recording this. We're going to probably move pretty fast. I think uh, we've got close to 90 slides covering three major topics. Um, so there's gonna be a lot of information here. And my real goal today is to make sure you learn something. Uh, if, I didn't, if I didn't teach you something today, then that was a failure. So help me along as we're going. When you learn something, just throw a little comment up in the, uh, in the chat, just letting me know that we've, we've succeeded to some degree on that, that goal of uh, helping you teach something or helping to teach you something. Along the same lines, uh, one ask for you is that if we taught you something today, you can do something in the near future and teach someone else something else. Uh, we're huge fans of the whole concept of pay it forward here at Genius Link, and it's really important that we kind of continue that, that ethos. So I'm gonna do everything I can to teach you uh, a ton of different stuff I've learned from the last 15 years of being at Amazon Associates of, of running Genius Link. We now work with thousands of different uh, Amazon uh, affiliates and, and publishers around the world. We see just a ton of uh, different volume. We, we deal with a lot of different challenges. So uh, today's goal is just to kind of walk you through some of those things. and. Uh, Kind of start at the beginning again we're going to go fast there's definitely some uh some deeper bits in there but um yeah uh please please don't hesitate to speak up via the chat uh we are always accessible for those that have been longtime genius link users you can you can ping us pretty easily via the um different chat windows inside the dashboard via email via the contact us form etc uh and then finally again this is being our first webinar would love for any feedback you have uh the good bad and the ugly you know honestly it's the bad and the ugly that helps us get better so Really appreciate the nice, kind words if there's any to be said, but it really, it's, uh, it's how can we get better? We're, we're constantly trying to get better. So that feedback is always, always good. Uh, Valerie, looks like you're not seeing anything. Uh, is anyone else having issues and just seeing a big white box or is that an issue related to Valerie? Um, can we get a quick, okay, Bobby, Bobby, looks like Bobby's all good. Thank you for confirming. Okay, so Valerie, good luck. Maybe Matt can help you with that uh, or ping us or dish download the slides and follow along if you've got the audio. Uh, again, uh, Amazon slides or the Amazon worksheet are probably the two different things you wanna download now. So to start off with, who, what, and why? Um, let's, let's just qualify things. Let's make sure that you're at the right place at the right time that we're talking about something that's of interest for you. So at the very beginning, Let's talk about Amazon, right? Uh, you're probably all aware that Amazon has an associates program. Uh, the Amazon associates program is massive. Uh, we, we did some research earlier this year and uh, we, we looked at a handful of different sources and some of the sources are saying that's nearly 1 million different affiliate publishers around the world. Uh, and that's, that's pretty crazy. So it's a massive program. There's a lot of different people doing this. Uh, that's, that's pretty cool. But what's even more interesting is how big this is for Amazon. 
Uh, so looking at some different numbers, we saw that it was just shy of about 200 billion in gross merchandise revenue, so how much stuff they sold last year. Uh, also doing some research, we saw that it was approximately 6% of their sales came from affiliate. Now that number I've seen as high as 40 in the past, that 40% that is a little old, 6% is relatively new. But if we just assume that 186 times 6% and assume there's a 5% commission that's paid out on average, we're looking at nearly or over half a billion dollars that Amazon pays out every year from their affiliate program. So again, Amazon Associates program is not something to be taken lightly. There's a lot of publishers uh, competing for a lot of money. And my goal today is to help you get uh, your fair share of that, that revenue coming through. So typically Amazon is referred to as a single associates program. And that's just not, it's easy to refer to it, but it's just not accurate. Amazon is really consists of a lot of individual storefronts and a lot of individual affiliate programs. They call them associates programs. So those individual affiliate programs, they're used to support those different storefronts. So if you're on the affiliate, Amazon's affiliate page or associates page, there's a little flag in the upper right hand corner. Uh, if you click on that flag, it'll drop down and show you all the different countries that are there. We're going to dive more into that in just a bit. Uh, just a quick visual of, of where these countries are. Uh, Amazon obviously has a global footprint and is expanding. We'll talk more about that in a minute. Uh, and just a quick screenshot here of Amazon acknowledging that there are other countries out there and uh, just kind of answering that, that you have to go sign up for those other programs. That's a question we get quite a bit. You know, if I'm just signed up for the Amazon.com affiliate program, can I earn commissions worldwide? And Amazon answers this question as well as we do on a regular basis. And the answer is no, each of those affiliate programs operate independently. So, okay, so that's Amazon's global associates program. Let's talk about how it relates to you. This is all about you. We want you to get value out of this. So the next few different slides, I need you to, to work with me. We're gonna do a little bit of a, an exercise here to just kind of validate that this is for you, that this makes sense for you. So what I want you to do is uh, for you, those of you on YouTube, uh, to hop into some of your videos and, and grab a, a link from your descriptions at Amazon affiliate link. Those typically look like amzn.to links. Uh, if you're on your blog, you know, jump to jump to an Amazon link, wherever it may be. But we're looking for one of those raw Amazon links. Uh, once you've done that, I want you to jump over to this really cool tool called geoscreenshot.com. So geoscreenshot.com uh, does this really cool thing where you can drop in a link and it will look at that link from different parts of the world. So what we're trying to validate now is if that Amazon link that you're digging out, if that actually works around the world. Um, and I, I already know the answer to this, but it's, it's always good to prove something to yourself. Uh, it really kind of helps set that foundation. So grab your link, jump over to geoscreenshot.com. You can take a second or two to, uh, to kind of organize geoscreenshot.com. Uh, you're gonna wanna grab some different cities that are in countries that have Amazon storefronts. Again, in that worksheet, we've kind of broken it down onto which ones those are, but, uh, and the country's always changed. So when I was building this deck, I grabbed Toronto, which is obviously in Canada. Uh, I grabbed a city in um, China and a city in India. So we know that Amazon.ca, Amazon.cn, and Amazon.in all have a storefront, have an affiliate program, so we wanna kinda check those links. So if you got a response like mine, you're gonna see that from each of these different countries, it took a little bit to load, but it is the exact same page. It's Amazon.com. Now you'll notice there are little differences. Um, so you know, Amazon.com can deliver to Canada, but if you look really closely, it's gonna charge another 70 bucks to deliver to Canada because there's import fees and there's shipping fees. Um, if you look over at this next one, the, the one that came from China, you know, it's gonna charge another $257 for again, shipping and import fees. Uh, in India, it's $520. So again, just seeing the same thing where this, this one Amazon link is just loading amazon.com no matter where in the world you're coming from. And that's just, that's not ideal. Uh, if you have shoppers from around the world or visitors from around the world, they probably wanna shop in their local storefront. They wanna shop at a store that has the language that works best for them, their native language. They probably wanna shop in their native currency and they don't wanna pay these ridiculous shipping and import fees to get that product in their local country. We're gonna talk a lot more about that later. So again, asking you to do that exercise, did you see that your Amazon link uh, resolved? Did it, did it go to amazon.com or did it go somewhere else? Were all three of those screenshots pretty much exactly the same in US dollars, in English, et cetera? Um, and my guess is no, amzn.to links, the short links from Amazon, do not localize. Um, that's something we found time and time and time again, uh, but just wanna again, make sure that you're seeing the same thing we are, so we're all on the same page. Okay, um, so just catching up on comments real quick. It looks like uh, Chrome is probably better than, than Safari. Maybe Firefox works as well for those of you that are having issues. Again, if you're getting audio but not the, the slides, I uh, would encourage you to 
jump in and just download the slides. They're a little bit big. Um, <laughs> There's a, a lot of high definition screenshots in there, but you can uh, follow along. The video is, uh, I'm gonna just mostly be going through the slides. There's not much extra demoing outside of that. So uh, again, if, if the video is giving you a hard time, just download the slides, we can go from there. Okay, so jumping back. So the second part of this is now that you've kind of taken a look at those links, let's take a look at your analytics. Um, so again, if you're a YouTuber, uh, it's, it's uh, easy to jump into your um, YouTube dashboard. If you click on analytics and then watch time and then geography and scroll down, uh, you can see essentially how that traffic breaks down for you. Uh, for the GRI channel, uh, our old YouTube channel, we see that 31% uh, of our traffic is US-based. That means 69% of our traffic is international. Uh, that's the first part to really pay attention to. The second part is where that international traffic is coming from. So US is our biggest, and then India, UK, Canada, Australia, Spain, Hong Kong and Pakistan, and then France and Germany. So of all those, only two of those countries did not have their own Amazon storefront. So we know that this audience that's viewing our YouTube channel is prime to be able to buy from Amazon with a globalized link. We know that each of those have a storefront, um, and that storefront is probably selling the same product they're looking for, but it's gonna again have that local currency, that local language, and not have those crazy import fees. Uh, awesome, 63 US for, for you and YouTube, Bobby, that's, uh, that's great. You have that then 27% that's international and that's probably an opportunity for you. Uh, for those that are not YouTubers, uh, Google Analytics is a great tool. Uh, so if you just jump in, uh, click on audience, then geo, and then location, you can get these same numbers. Uh, so uh, idea mensh, uh, say we work with Mario site, it looks like they have about 63% uh, international traffic as well. So about 20, or sorry, 63% US, so about 27% international. And again, his next top countries are all countries that have a storefront. So for you, those of you that are following along with the worksheet, I uh, really encourage you to just add those numbers in. That's, those are pretty important numbers. We're gonna use them again in just a minute. So what, what's the percentage uh, of traffic in the US? And then what are your top five countries or so? Uh, and do they have, uh, do they have a, an Amazon storefront or not? Uh, so we talked about YouTube, we talked about uh, Google Analytics. For those of you that don't like Google Analytics um, and have a website, Similar Web is another great tool to just give you a basic breakdown of, of your traffic, your traffic or someone else's traffic. You can use this tool for all sorts of things. Uh, but it's really important to note that it is, um, you gotta take it with a grain of salt. You, you, these numbers aren't super specific, but for our instance, this should work just fine. Okay, so now that you've seen that your link doesn't work and you've seen how much international traffic it, you have, the, the question is, does it make sense to, to follow along, right? Does it make sense to start to globalize your links? Does it make sense to, to really customize that user experience specifically for your international audience? Uh, and the short answer is if you have more than 10% international traffic, yes, uh, it, it's probably something that makes, that makes a lot of sense for you. Uh, the medium answer, and this is where things get a little bit more complicated and where we can start to drill in, is that for every 10% of international traffic, we we'll often see our clients add about three to 4% back to their top line. So over here on this right-hand side, you see a bit of a story problem, some, some algebra to, to kind of move around. So we're just gonna walk through this real quickly. So if your percent of international traffic is say 70%, let's just put that in as a, a, um, a whole number, 70 divided by 10 is seven, and seven times 3.5 is 24.5%. So in theory, we're gonna add 24.5% back to the top line. So in this hypothetical use case, if you made $1,000 in Amazon commission, and you add that 24.5% back in, you'll now be making 1245. So again, take your percent of international traffic, make that a whole number, divide that by 10, and that's gonna give you the multiplier. You go times 3.5, we're just averaging kind of that three and a half uh, as a difference between three to 4%. Add that into the Amazon commissions that you're currently making, say from amazon.com, and you can show you what you're gonna make as a whole. Now, it's really important to take this number also with a grain of salt because the long answer is that it depends. Everyone wants to know if it's worth it or not for them so we can lead them through this basic exercise. But at the end of the day, you're all unique. The products that you recommend, your distribution of international traffic, uh, how you recommend those products, et cetera. So it really depends on, on exactly those things. And the best way to answer this is to try it out. And that's exactly why Genius Link has a trial and why we work with clients so much is to, to make sure that it fits. If you're not seeing a lot of international traffic, if you're not able to monetize that international traffic, then there's a lot of other things that Genius Link can do for you, but this thing probably isn't the answer for you. Um, and we just wanna be upfront and honest about that. If we're not adding value for you, then there's no point wasting your time with a tool that doesn't work. So again, just let's, let's be honest, let's, uh, 
Let's work through the math. If you have a chance, let's do a, a trial if you haven't already jumped on the platform. But let's make sure that you're getting value from that. And we're going to talk a little bit later on about how to kind of calculate that ROI and dive specifically into it. So why do you actually uh, globalize links? So we talked about this a little bit. Um, for your international users, going and getting sent to Amazon.com and then being asked to pay $70 or $250 extra just to be able to buy that product, that's, that's a dead-end buying experience. That's essentially a broken link for your users. On top of that, if they natively speak a different language or natively pay for things in a different currency, you're adding a lot of friction by sending them all to the same storefront. So from the user experience perspective, uh, globalizing your links can make a lot of sense. But what probably makes more sense for you is the monetization piece, right? Using ge uh, geolocalization with your links, you can improve your conversion rates and you can increase your revenue. And that's where we're going to spend a lot of time um, over for the next hour or so. So two different things, user experience monetization. We put them in this order because we think that's important. At the end of the day, this is why you globalize your links. So just to wrap that all up, do you have Amazon affiliate links on your site, in your social media, or on your YouTube channels? Yes or no? Uh, again, we have this in the worksheet as well if you want to fill it out there. Um, and do you have more than 10% international traffic? Yes or no? So two, two basic questions. Um, if you answered yes to both those questions, I encourage you to continue on. If you answered no, to either or both those questions. Really appreciate you uh, You spend the last few minutes with us, 17 minutes or so with us, but really the rest of this just doesn't make sense for you. Again, we wanna be honest, we're really gonna dive into helping the people that have Amazon links on their site, their social media, and their YouTube, and those that have approximately 10% international traffic. So, all right, deep breath, how we doing? Um, all right, it looks like uh, Valerie didn't quite work out for you, but we will definitely send you that recording. Uh, everyone else getting some good stuff out of here? I'll, uh, awesome. Thanks, Bobby. You are on it with that chat. Really appreciate the feedback. It makes it so much easier for me <laughs> just to know that someone's out there and listening. I feel, feel that DJs have a, have a hard job. <laughs> yes, the Mant anxiety is there. KG, I can, I'm happy to follow up with you later and we can work through this. Um, since you've been using Genius Link for a bit, your numbers are going to be more specific uh, just based off that dashboard. So, um, Okay, so let's take a deep breath and let's dive into this now. We're gonna go through three different steps. Step one is actually signing up for the international programs. Um, I know that signing up for Amazon Associates program, it's work. Uh, and it's a, a bunch of different steps and those steps can be, can they, they can add anxiety. Um, so the hardest thing about doing something is usually the first step. My goal with this next section is really just to give you uh, the fodder that this isn't scary, that there's not, a lot of weird stuff that you're gonna to have to go through that's actually a fairly easy process. So before I get ahead of myself, let's just kind of dive into it. Um, again, Amazon is a global beast. We look at, looked at that, um, that map a little bit earlier. There's 14 different storefronts. We know there's more on the way. We actually wrote a blog about that last year. Uh, we're seeing some more in, uh, on, the, on the Eastern Hemisphere. Um, but we know that Amazon's continuing to grow. On top of that, we also know that there's those 13 different affiliate programs. Uh, 13's a big number. Um, Yes, you already signed up for one, so that effectively lowers you down to 12. But it's important to kind of break those into two different pieces, right? There's what we consider the easy affiliate programs to sign up for, and then the hard ones. So the easy ones are really the US and Canada, and then the five across to Europe. Um, the hard ones are hard because they require a local address, or they'll only pay out to a local bank account, uh, or there's some other little kind of catch that makes it a, a bit more of a challenge. Uh, those are kind of scattered throughout the world. And I'm not gonna say, that you don't want to sign up for these hard ones. I just want to kind of put it in, in perspective for you. The easy ones are fairly easy to sign up for. I'm going to lead you through signing up for those here in just a minute. The hard ones, it's the same form. It's the same process. I would just encourage you to, to shelve this until uh, you sign up for those easier ones and see that this is working well for your audience, for your links, et cetera. So definitely don't ignore these. Just kind of put these as, as second on your uh, to-do list. So let's start with Canada. Uh, we're gonna go through six different steps. Uh, I have slides, I, I have done this, I did time it. Uh, it's gonna take you about 15 minutes. So after we're done with this webinar, I would encourage you to jump right in and just do it. If you haven't signed up for Canada yet, just do it. 15 minutes and you're done. You're gonna start monetizing on that traffic. So here are the steps. Um, again, we, we have a recording, uh, you have a, a copy of the slide, so I'm not gonna run through each of these individual things, um, but you can kind of work through piece by piece. A few just kind of quick call outs, uh, someone, uh, asked just this morning, you know, can you use the same email for the new accounts internationally? And you absolutely can. In fact, we encourage it because it's much easier to remember one email than have a bunch of other ones. Uh, however, if you do want to get tricky with it, uh, a quick little hack that um, 
yes, Jeremy, you can absolutely rewatch this later. Sorry, that just caught in the corner of my eye. Uh, one little hack that if you use Gmail uh, or some of the other major email providers, you can add a plus and then something to the, um, the first part of your email address. So my email is jl at geni.us. So with this example, I just did jl plus one. Uh, and Amazon recognized that as a unique email. Uh, anything they send is gonna go to my main inbox. But that's just a quick little hack that uh, I use a ton of different times to get unique emails that all say go to the same place. But again, uh, go through this at your own rate. Um, you know, again, it shouldn't take more than 15 minutes. There's nothing too crazy here. Uh, one of the things that may be a bit of a challenge though, if you are coming from outside the US or Canada, is that they ask you to verify your account with a, with a phone call. And they'll call a US or Canada-based number uh, if you're living in, in Europe or Africa or Asia, this is a bit more of a challenge. Really recommend Google Voice is a great way to, um, to set up a US-based number uh, to, to really kind of verify that account. Uh, if you do that, one little tip is don't, if they give you a pin that starts with one, go back and go forward again so they give you a new pin. A pin that starts with one just confuses Google Voice and that's a bit of a challenge. But again, it shouldn't be too much of a challenge uh, and you should be able to dive in there. Uh, create your account. Uh, make sure you read the operating agreement. We'll talk more about that in a bit. Um, you'll go through, you'll get the congratulations, you'll get a, a unique ID that you'll use to make sure that your links are affiliated correctly. Uh, you'll get an email, and then it'll ask you if you wanna do your tax information. Uh, we strongly encourage you to just bust out the tax information. It's not that hard. Again, uh, just a few more minutes and then you're done with it. And that makes sure that the money will start flowing to you just as soon as you earn it. Uh, so at the end, again, it's um, a handful of different steps. You're set up, it shouldn't take more than 15 minutes, and you're, you're good to go. Um, and that will set you up then to, that was your warm up for Europe. So Europe is, is five different programs. So the UK, Germany, France, Spain, and Italy. It's one step longer, but it's a few minutes shorter. And with Europe, you can actually sign up for all five countries at once. So it's a bit of a hack. So again, if there's seven easy ones, the US you're probably already signed up for, Canada we just talked through, and the last five are these ones. So again, uh, you're gonna have a copy of these, these um, of the recording as well as the, the slides. So I encourage you to kind of work through this if you need a guide, but it's, it's pretty self-explanatory. It also really kind of follows the, um, the same process as the previous one. A lot of the information that you set up previously will also flow through to um, be included there. So when you sign up again, it's good to go. Of the different countries, I would probably encourage you to start with UK if you're an English speaker, uh, and you're probably an English speaker to some degree since you're on this webinar. So uh, start with UK, hop on in there make those things happen. Uh, again, really encourage you to read their operating agreement. It's gonna be a little bit different, but um, it's still some really good stuff. Uh, once you get towards the end of here, this is where it's great. Step seven will actually give you the option after you sign up for the UK to sign up for the other four countries in, the, uh, in Europe with just a click of the button. So for Spain, for France, for Germany, for Italy, you just click that sign up now button and it'll automatically use that same information and apply you to that program. Boom, boom, boom. You now have five unique tracking IDs. You are now signed up for the seven countries, US, Canada, Germany, Italy, Spain, France, and the UK. Uh, of course, you'll get a bunch of emails. Those emails will be in the different languages. Um, so real quick, those, those different foreign language emails, uh, it's easy to use translate.google.com. Uh, I, I took a bunch of German in high school and uh, learned Spanish later on, and I still cannot translate these emails very well. So uh, Google Translate is the way to go for me. Uh, it's also important just to skip back real quick that uh, they'll give you just a quick important note. One is that they're gonna review your website, so be prepared for that. Uh, they kind of do that at a later date so you don't have to wait for them. I love it that they do it like that. Uh, also, it's important to note that the Amazon Associates programs, while you can sign up via just the UK, each of those different dashboards is unique. So if you wanna see the commissions you earned in Spain, you can't go to the Amazon UK dashboard. You have to go to the Amazon.es or the Spain Associates program dashboard to actually see that commission. Okay, uh, so again, once you sign up for the program, I encourage you just to take that a step further, just finish up the tax information. It's, uh, I know it's a bore, tax stuff is never fun. We're gonna talk about taxes a little bit more later, but it's just something just to bust out and be done with it. Uh, boom, 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 and you should be, you should be good. Um, so again, that's a lot of information. The slides have a lot of information. Download the slides and use them as a guide, but again, really encourage you, if you haven't yet, jump in after this webinar and just bust through that. Um, it's, 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 uh, sorry, reading your comment here. Google Chrome is great with the different dashboards. Um, yeah, Matt's absolutely right. So Google Translate is good when you have emails. Google Chrome is great when you're viewing foreign language content in a browser. Thank you, Matt. That's a, that's a great one. Um, 
Okay, so next we're gonna talk about building globally aware links, right? So sign up for the programs is your first step, that's super important, but what do you do once you've signed up? And that's to actually build those links. Uh, so we're gonna spend this next uh, 10 minutes or so talking about building, testing, and organizing your links. And I wanna start off right off the bat. You know, Genius Link is not the only uh, intelligent link management service. Uh, we're one of the oldest. I'd like to think we're one of the most um, built out and most advanced. We have patents on this, but we're not the only ones. There are definitely other uh, link translation tools out there. Um, there are a, this, this list is not an uh, exhaustive list by any means. It's definitely the ones that we pay attention to. Uh, there's definitely a lot of other ones out there that, yeah, they, they kind of treat it as a, a secondary function. But um, there's a lot of ones out there. Amazon One Link has definitely picked up a lot of um, notoriety. Uh, Amazon released that about a year ago. Uh, we spent a significant amount of time looking at that. Um, but so far, we found that Amazon One Link uh, has a lot of shortcomings. So happy to discuss in depth. We've written about it pretty exhaustively in our blog. We have a web page on the site that just kind of breaks those down in comparison. So if you're if you're considering taking a look at one link, awesome. I encourage you to I encourage you to kind of compare conversions. But you may want to review the blog article where we talk about our translation just kind of beat some hands down and they're just not nearly as functional as, as some of the other stuff. So you know, again, I do not want to discourage you from experimenting. Experimenting is what got us here today. But it's uh, you may you may want to go into it with uh, eyes wide open. So again, want to be completely honest with you. There are other other tools. Obviously, Genius Link is what we uh, have built with blood, sweat, and tears. So we know this one best. So we're going to use that going forward. But again, being transparent here. Okay, so what do you do to get Genius Link set up and running? So first of all, you have to jump back into your different Amazon Associates dashboards. And again, you're going to have seven of them now after you've signed up. And each of those Amazon Associates dashboards in the upper right hand corner, you'll have a unique ID. Uh, sometimes that's called a site ID or a store ID. Other times it's called a tracking ID. We try to be consistent with our with our uh, vocabulary and use tracking ID as much as possible, uh, even though you'll see it kind of used uh, different or called different things in different places. So you can jump up there and grab that one, or you can actually go through and create a unique tracking ID. So by default, Amazon will give you 100 unique tracking IDs. You have to kind of uh, help assign them. They'll give you 100 different ones. And we really encourage you to create new tracking IDs because that can be really valuable in the long run. So if you've been an associate for a while and you just started to use Genius Link, we encourage you to jump in and create a new tracking ID specifically for Genius Link so you can track how your links going through Genius Link are different than your links going through other properties. Uh, so if you're first kind of just putting your toes in the water, it's great to create that new tracking ID. And you can, again, use the slides or download the slides and just kind of walk through that process. It's pretty simple uh, to come up with that new one. So once you have that tracking ID, you're going to jump over into your Genius Link account. And you're going to click on that affiliate tab. And that affiliate tab is going to probably pop up this box where it's going to ask you to drop in your affiliate tracking ID. So when you drop that in, you need to make sure that you've uh, correctly told it which program it's for. We support a handful of different programs, so Amazon Associates, obviously. And then you need to tell it specifically what country it's for. So we can be smart about this to some degree. Anything that ends in a dash 20, we know is either Brazil, Canada, Mexico, or the United States. If it ends in dash 21, it's one of the countries that um, is in Europe, uh, dash 22, dash 23. Those all kind of help us determine what continent that, that track ID is coming from, but not specifically what program. It's really important that you match the program with the links in the country because that's how we're going to affiliate your links. If you mismatch this, you're not going to get credited for those sales that you deserve. So once you jump in there, uh, you're going to have to do this for each of the countries. I know it's a little repetitive, but you only have to do it once. So rinse and repeat, get those tracking IDs into the Genius Link dashboard. Uh, once they're in that Genius Link dashboard, we'll know how to properly affiliate your link going forward and you should be good to go. So bust that out. Give yourself a pat on the back and move on to the next step. So the next step is to actually create that affiliate link. Um, so that affiliate link, you want to start with a raw Amazon link. Uh, so you can go to the Amazon store, uh, browse around whatever product you want to recommend, uh, and just grab that link. So it's usually easiest just to grab that whole link. But again, it's just a little pro tip. You only need the first part of that link. So if you're looking at that link, it's probably long and ugly and convoluted, but really we only need that first part up until that ASIN. And the ASIN is that um, unique identifier that Amazon uses in their ecosystem. Everything else is just tracking for Amazon. So again, if, if you feel like uh, you wanna level up and, and wanna kind of cut your links down to make them easier to deal with, go ahead and do this. Uh, if you don't wanna deal with it, that's perfectly okay. We know how to deal with this on our side. So you're welcome to just copy the whole link and drop it in. I just wanted to again, kind of give you a, a little bit of a heads up on that. Um, oh, 
that's a note for myself and whoops. So I was gonna put a new screenshot in there. Sorry that my, my note is coming through, but we have five different ways in which to, uh, to create a link. There's the dashboard, which uh, most of you are probably familiar with. It's the way you can best customize that link. Uh, there's a lot of different tools, and a lot of different pieces that you can jump in and play with. Another tool that's super fast is our Chrome extension. So that Chrome extension, you can actually uh, jump in uh, with, with Google Chrome and you can just right click on the page or click the little extension up in the upper right hand corner and it'll automatically create a genius link from that page. So that works not only for Amazon links, but for any link that you want to shorten. Uh, we also have a WordPress plugin and a JavaScript snippet. Uh, those are great for your websites or blogs that have hundreds or thousands of links kind of scattered throughout. It'd just be too much time to go in and update each of those individually. Uh, on the, the flip side, we also have a, a quick build format. The quick build format works really well for those of you that are uh, don't use JavaScript, so you're, you're working with AMP pages or uh, whatever, the, uh, you know, Facebook's instant articles, I think is what they're called. So places where, where JavaScript's not allowed, you can actually uh, convert Amazon links into quick build links that run through our service uh, with just a few lines of code. It's a pretty easy process. But then you can take advantage of that auto affiliation and that link translation as well. Uh, and then finally, we have an API. We have a very robust API. It's getting better all the time. Uh, so if you want to do your complete uh, control of your account from afar. The API gives you a lot of different tools to do specifically that. Um, so again, sorry, sorry about the comment there in the, the middle of the slide. We'll um, uh, update a, an updated version, or we'll we'll upload an updated version of the, the screen or the slide so that you won't uh, have this big distraction. Um, okay. So next slide. Once you've copied that link and you know where you're going. Um, in what, or sorry, what tool you're going to use. It's important, again, to decide which tool you're going to use because you know, just like a, if you only use a hammer, everything looks like a nail, using the tool that matches what you want to do uh, will give you the most flexibility and the best outcome. With this example, we're going to just use the dashboard. Uh, the dashboard allows you just to drop that link in. So on the links page, you can just drop it right in there, copy, paste, and boom, you're going to get um, this new screen that's going to pop up. So we're going to parse that Amazon link. Uh, we're going to know about it. Um, but from there, you can do a, a custom domain if you want. Um, you can set that vanity code so you can make it a little bit more uh, trustworthy and memorable. Uh, you can also assign where you want that link to live inside of Genius Link. There's different groups to help you organize. Uh, and you can also leave a note for yourself or someone on your team. So those are just you know, four quick customization pieces. You don't have to do any of these. By default, you can just click Save, and we'll, we'll take care of that for you. Uh, once it's saved, it's going to pop up. You'll see it in your, your links list. Uh, you can copy it to the dashboard with that little... Um, a little icon under number one. Uh, or if you click that gear icon, you'll have a few more options. So you can clone that link, you can jump into the individual stats, or you can edit the link. Um, and it's important to note that editing the link is actually, it's, it's insurance for you. So if something changes, if you wanna tweak it later, you can always go back in and edit that short link. Uh, that's a big difference from say us and, and Bitly uh, or another URL shortener. Uh, the ability to jump in, edit any link to make sure that you can clean things up. If, if the link goes stale, outdated, et cetera, that's there for you. Um, so this next section is all about testing your links. Uh, I'm a huge believer in testing your links. There's so much stuff that can go wrong. Um, and there's so many things that, that can kind of break along the way. So I encourage you to test as soon as you build it. I encourage you to test before you publish it. I encourage you to test again after you've published a link. Uh, but the next few slides, I'm going to talk about ways that you can test your link kind of right off the bat. Uh, for Amazon links, we have this tool called the visualizer. And the visualizer is going to take that link and it's going to run through the different countries and see how well we translate. So you're going to see the different countries and the ones that are covered. So Germany, it says plus four countries there. So that means also you know, Austria and um, Switzerland and other countries that also speak Germany or speak German and are around Germany are going to get you know, kind of lumped in together. We're going to tell you how well we were able to match that product. So this is a perfect match. We're going to tell you if you've added affiliate tracking IDs so that we can make sure that that link is monetized. And finally, we're going to give you that link um, that will actually provide through. So the visualizer is a great way to test your links, uh, but it's also important to say that our link translation isn't perfect. And we're gonna dive into that in a little bit more in just a couple of slides. So again, just a quick run through to see if it is working, if something's missing or whatnot is always something we recommend. Another way you can test your link is actually by, by spoofing it. So if you take your raw link and you add slash ISO2 slash country code, the two letter country code, we'll translate that link for you. Uh, it's important to note that the UK, the country code for that is GB, Canada, CA, et cetera. So uh, this was kind of the original way that we tested links. Just grab that link, ISO2 slash whatever it may be, and it'll resolve that link for you um, for whatever country you want instead of using your IP address. 
Uh, it's also worth noting that you can get pretty crazy with that if you have different uh, devices or language, et cetera. You can, you can add tracking or the spoofing parameter to the end of it and actually make those links translate so you don't actually have to jump through a proxy. So that's one more way to test it. Uh, that geo screenshot tool that we talked about earlier, that's another great way to test it. So um, you know, before when we tested an Amazon link, it was the same, the same product for every, or sorry, the same screenshot for every single image. If you look closely now with that Genius link, you're gonna notice that the, the click from Canada has the price in CDN and plus free shipping, right? There's no longer that import or tax fee. Uh, from, from India, we see that loan, loads in Amazon.in, the price is in INR. Uh, from the UK in this example, it's, it's pulling up in Great British Pounds, et cetera. We know this link is now localizing correctly, um, testing it remote. Uh, when you're testing your links, one thing not to do is to drop a Genius Link right into Amazon's link checker. Amazon's link checker is built to test Amazon links for a tracking ID. So your Genius Link is going to resolve into an Amazon link. So if you want to test that end result, please do, but do not use the Amazon Associates link checker to check a Genius Link. All right. So link translation, um, this, is, this is the magic. This is what kind of, you know, what, what makes it all work. And this, I can spend hours talking about this, but I will save you from that. The gist is we run through five different steps. And in the process of running through that five different steps, we're gonna do our best to find a product that matches that product that you're, you're recommending. Uh, in the exact match, we try the different unique identifiers and the perfect match and the best match will actually go to the um, metadata about the product and we'll try using the different bits of the metadata. And this allows us to find that same product even though the ASIN, that unique identifier, has changed between the products. Uh, if we can't find the, the correct item uh, using, using the metadata, using these other two steps, we'll actually go to a search and that search we're actually gonna try on the back end a couple times first or a few times first. We're gonna use different combinations of metadata. Sometimes it's the title that works best. Sometimes it's the manufacturer plus the title or the manufacturer plus the part name. So there's a couple different combinations. We're looking for kind of a sweet spot there. We don't want the search results to come back with zero results. Um, that means it was too specific of a search. We don't want it to come back with you know, thousands of results or hundreds of results, that was too broad. So we're kind of looking for that sweet spot you know, where it's good that the product that we, we want you to go to is on that first page. Uh, if all these steps fail, if we can't hit that sweet spot with the search, we're actually just gonna return to the original. Uh, we firmly believe that user experience is more important than monetization. We believe getting that user to the right place is best. If we can't get the person to the right place because that product doesn't exist, we would rather send them back to the original link than to send them to the wrong store um, with, a, with either the wrong product or a search results page that's useless for them. Uh, this is our philosophy. Our philosophy can be different than your philosophy and you can definitely override that. So. On that note, we know our link translation is not perfect. You may not agree with our rules that user experience comes from monetization, or maybe in the example of this camera, in Spain, you may have a lot of traffic coming from Spain and we're not doing a great search for you there. Uh, so what you can do is you can actually fix this. We have this whole system called advanced targets where you can go in and specify exactly how you want a link to work. So you can say by country, by language, by device, et cetera. Uh, country is usually the one that's most important for these examples, but in Spain, we found the correct product for Spain or Portugal, Andorra, you know, all the countries we would normally send to Spain, you just add in a single rule, and now for all the other countries, we'll use our link translation, but for Spain, you specified exactly how you want it to work, and again, you've added that Spanish uh, tracking ID, so it's gonna affiliate for you as well. So you've taken a link, we've done most of the work, but you've customized it to make it work exactly for you, and that's a super important piece. Again, we can talk a lot about this, happy to uh, offline as well. Uh, next thing I want to talk to you about uh, real briefly is something we call groups. Groups are essentially just buckets of links of reports and track IDs. So reporting can happen on three different layers. The group is a great way to kind of specify. So if I'm promoting a bunch of different products, maybe I'll put them in a group. Or if I have two or three different blogs, I'll make each blog a different group. Uh, or if I have three or four different channels, I'll make each other different channels a group as well. And that really kind of helps me organize my links. It helps me organize my reporting. and also helps me organize my affiliate tracking IDs. So on that note, the affiliate tracking IDs uh, we have this whole concept of overrides. So you can set up your default uh, track IDs, and those are the ones that are gonna be used by default. But as you dive in, you have your different pages or your different YouTube channels, you can add different unique track IDs per channel, per web page, et cetera. And you do this with this whole override piece. Uh, again, this is a little complicated. We have a bunch of documentation. I encourage you to, to dive through that uh, or talk to one of our support team uh, to kind of help through that. This allows you to use multiple track IDs from the same country for different projects, for different pages, for different links, et cetera. Uh, and this is also gonna take advantage of that, 
that best practice we talked about before where you can go in and actually create new track IDs inside of the uh, Amazon Associates Central Dashboard. So that all kind of plays together and that's definitely a, probably its own hour long conversation on its own. Uh, for as far as organization goes, we have the concept of adding different tags. Uh, those tags are just kind of um, things, notes you can leave yourself uh, that gets back, reported back. So you can, you know, this was for Facebook or this was for t Twitter. So you can organize, you know, kind of by, by group and then take that one step further by adding the different tags. Again, there's a lot of different nuance and depth that we can, we can put into this, but we'll leave it here for now and we can definitely dive in. There's also some great documentation that, that success guys have put together to help walk you through that. Okay, so we set up the different accounts. We've jumped in, we've set up our different links. Let's say we've put those links out, we've published them now for a bit. Uh, what, what should we expect? What is that localization tool gonna help us do? Um, we talked about the user experience, we talked about the monetization, but I just kind of wanted to wrap this together with a more real world example. So we've, we've got some clicks, we've got some commissions. What we should be seeing from our primary account, and this is US again, this is where we started, we should see less clicks coming through, but we should see the same level of sales and commissions. Uh, with, this, with less clicks and the same level of sales and commissions, this is actually going to boost our conversion rate and also boost our earnings per click. At the same time, we're going to start seeing sales coming through on the international storefronts. So we're using less clicks to Amazon.com to generate the same amount of sales. So that should stay the same. As a result, conversions and earnings per click go up. For those additional clicks that are no longer getting sent to Amazon.com because we're being smart about them, we're sending them to Amazon.co.uk or Amazon.de, et cetera you're now able to monetize those so you see those commissions coming back up. So uh, again, pretty high level, but that should give you an overview of why do my clicks drop as soon as I turn on Genius Link, and that's exactly why. We're being smart about where those clicks go. Uh, in the end, your commission should only go up. Uh, commissions in your home country should stay the same, but you'll start earning those commissions internationally. Okay, another deep breath. That was a lot of stuff to run through. The next section we're gonna be talking about when you do post that link, some general things to follow through with. Uh, it is no fun getting kicked out of the Amazon Associates program. Unfortunately, Amazon is um, kicking a lot of people out for, for pretty petty things, but it's what they have to do to protect their program. So I don't blame them one bit. Um, I, I do blame you for not reading, this, uh, reading through the operating agreement, but let me give you just a few different things to help guide you and make, make that operating agreement not as, uh, as cumbersome and over, overbearing. So. We're, we've taken these from one of the more popular blogs we wrote earlier this year. Uh, that blog goes through 10 different items. We're just going to go through a, a handful of the most popular ones. But by um, largest margin, the thing most people get in, uh, in trouble for is, quote unquote, cloaking their links. Uh, you need to make sure that your links are obvious. Amazon wants you to let people know that they're going to Amazon. So when you put a genius link out on a social media post or on YouTube, Somewhere around it, just mention that it's going to Amazon. Um, that makes sure that you're not cloaking your link. It gives Amazon the transparency they want. From our side on the technical perspective, we'll transfer any of that referral information through and make sure that it's good to go. So cloaking your link, Amazon doesn't want you to obscure. So tell them that you're sending them to Amazon and you're good to go. It's as simple as that, but unfortunately too many people just drop in a Genius link or a Bitly link or a HubSpot or Owly link and it just Amazon doesn't like that. They want people to know where it's being directed to. Uh, if you're using one of our tools like the ALE or the JavaScript snippet, uh, there's actually an option to preserve the URL until click. So that means when you hover over the link, it'll show you where that link is gonna be redirected to. And that's typically fine for them. Again, it's better to let the consumer know in an obvious way that it's gonna go to Amazon, but just showing that that URL is going to Amazon and not in uh, implementing our stuff until after click using the preserve, preserve URL function uh, can help get you kind of out of that, that sticky spot. So be transparent, let, am, let people know where you're going and you should be fine as far as this terms of service piece. Another thing Amazon doesn't like is offline links. So it was a really popular practice um, to put a lot of different affiliate links inside of your emails, inside of your eBooks, inside of PDFs, et cetera. Amazon is not a fan of that. Uh, it's really important to them that it's an online source. They like to see that refer information coming through. Uh, so. You can put a link to your webpage in, in your email, in your book, your PDF, et cetera. That's, that's fine. It's not often the best thing because people have already read some content they're, they're looking to purchase and you're kind of slowing that down. Uh, one of the things we've been really pushing on lately is this whole concept of what we call a choice page. A choice page is a intermediary landing page that's super optimized for selling. It's, it's a high converting page. Uh, it's gonna probably can be higher converting than your page that has the whole story or, or text that you had before. 
Uh, it includes just some information about the product, a title, and then a buy button or more uh, to send that person on. But since that's a, a landing page, it's online, it no longer becomes an offline issue. So if you need to put links in your email, books, or PDFs, really encourage you to check out this tool we've been pushing hard called the Choice Pages. We've done a ton of work, our engineers have been hard at work leveling those up. They're super fun to build now. There's a lot of customization, they're pretty cool. Uh, next one, incentivize clicks. Unfortunately, we see this all too often as well, where if you're a YouTuber, you ask, you know, you finish up your video asking your, your people to click on the, the link below or mentioning that clicking on the link supports your site. Amazon is not a fan of this whatsoever. They want those clicks to be organic. Uh, they consider this incentivizing and will kick you out of the program very quickly if they see you doing this. Um, unfortunately, if it's you mentioning it in a YouTube video, that leaves you in a really hard spot because then you have to go refilm that YouTube video. So please don't tell people to click your links. Leave it up to them to, uh, to, to go ahead and make that choice and move forward. Uh, another thing for all you authors out there, um, sending through too many free eBooks will also get you in trouble. Amazon has kind of this ratio that they've put out um, to keep you, keep you there. It's, it's pretty high number, so it's typically not an issue, but it's something you should pay attention to from time to time. Um, but sending people to too many free eBooks will also get you in trouble. Uh, I think the reason they included this is back in the day, uh, when they had the different tiers and you had hit certain numbers of uh, commission rate based off the different number of sales, you would um, you would get higher commission rates and you could bump up those sales by recommending free products. You often get more sales from recommending a free product than recommending a, a lawnmower or a TV, but the people that do buy those lawnmowers and TVs, because you hit that threshold of clicks, you'll get paid a higher percentage commission. That no longer makes sense anymore. Amazon obviously changed their commission rates a little over a year ago. Um, so this is kind of a, a moot point, but still just something to pay attention to. Do not promote too many free eBooks. Amazon has a great report in their dashboard that tells you kind of where you're at with that threshold. Uh, another thing that's super important here is an affiliate disclaimer. Uh, Amazon gives you some language to use, but at the end of the day, you need to be clear that you're an affiliate marketer. Just like you want to let people know that you're linking to Amazon, you also want to let people know and the FTC um, and Amazon that, that you're using their affiliate program, that these links, these recommendations are incentivized to some degree, um, that you're earning some sort of commission coming back. And there's some great language that people have come back with that's totally legit, but also kind of you know, steers it in a clear path. Um, again, if, if you are not a big fan of, of this, uh, of kind of following through and updating all your YouTube videos, um, our, we have a solution for that as well with the choice pages. Um, it by default includes an affiliate disclaimer in there as well. Um, but yeah, at the end of the day, it's, it's really important to be clear. I saw an article not too long ago that mentioned 90% of the affiliate links on YouTube and Pinterest don't include a disclaimer. And that's a huge issue for, for both the FTC and for, for Amazon. So definitely encourage you to do it. Um, yeah, you'll sleep better at night knowing it's not gonna get you in trouble by not having it there. Uh, another thing to be really weary of is old products. So for those of you that have been uh, using the Associates program for a long time, have built out a lot of different web pages on your blog or your website, you probably have a ton of stale links across your site. Um, those old products are not something Amazon wants to see. I haven't seen them specifically kick someone out for this in particular, but they all sometimes cite this as another reason uh, as a case, and then it's a real pain in the ass to go back and, and clean that up. So we built out a solution for this about a year ago, uh, the Amazon Link Health Monitor. So if you're running all your clicks through us, We'll let you know uh, when a link goes stale or when the API no longer supports it, so you can go back and update it. So again, it's not only important to keep Amazon happy, but it's also important for your bottom line. You're gonna get really bad conversion rates um, by sending people to a product that's out of stock or no longer exists or is just a 404 error. So let's let's make sure those links are healthy. Uh, our One of our fundamental missions at Genius Link is not to create broken links, so giving you that health is uh, an important part in us fulfilling our mission as well. So again, that was just a few of the different things that can get you kicked out of Amazon's affiliate program. We have a handful more in that blog piece. If you haven't read it or at least skimmed through it, definitely encourage it. It is not fun getting kicked out of the Amazon affiliate program. Um, if that does happen, please let us know. There are things that we can do, but uh, typically at the end of the day, it's up to Amazon um, and it's, it's really their discretion. So please read the Associates uh, Operating Agreement. Please read that blog. Please don't get kicked out for something stupid. Uh, it's, it's so sad when that happens, but uh, hopefully, hopefully you won't now. Okay, deep breath again. We all hanging in there? We having fun yet? Um, awesome on the, the, the chat. I had to stop paying attention to it. You guys are, are doing great uh, cruising through there. Again, if you've learned something today, uh, make sure that you just kind of mention that in there. That helps us know that we're, uh, we're on the right track. Okay, so as we start to wrap up the, the webinar, I wanna talk about getting paid, right? Because earning affiliate commissions 
is not the same as being able to spend affiliate commissions. It doesn't make any sense to earn a bunch of money in Japan and not actually be able to use it or have a bunch of money sitting in your Amazon Spain account and not be able to, to use it. So this next section is going to kind of talk about how to, now that you've earned that affiliate revenue, how to get that into your bank account, how to get that into your pocket so you can actually enjoy it. So Amazon in general has three different ways they pay out. So they pay out via gift certificate, they'll pay out direct deposit, and they'll pay out by paper check. So each of these are local. The gift certificate is for, say, Amazon.com, Amazon.co.uk, or Amazon Japan. Uh, the direct deposit they'll pay out is typically local as well. So if you have a US-based bank, you can get direct deposit from Amazon.com. You cannot get direct deposit from Amazon.co.uk. And then paper check will be in the local currency. So if you get a check from Amazon Canada, it's not going to be in USD. It's going to be in CAD, Canadian dollars. So it's important that uh, you, you know that and that you can also deal with that. Uh, not all banks are great at taking, uh, I'll, I'll speak more of that in just a moment. We have some more stories. Um, so just to kind of a quick breakdown, here are the different uh, payment types for each of the different affiliate programs. So you'll notice again that those seven easy countries that we talked about before, those are the same ones that will not only pay out by paper check, but also gift certificate. The more challenging countries that we talked about, the hard ones, those are the ones that really only pay out by direct deposit with an exception for Japan. Uh, Japan pays out by gift certificates, uh, a little aside there. We used to do a, uh, for the holidays, everyone on the team, the Genius Link team would, uh, would get a Amazon gift certificate. It was a bit of a scavenger hunt. They didn't ship everything. But we, we got some really weird and wacky and fun stuff by, by using those uh, Amazon Japan gift certificates. So that's uh, one thing you want to do if you're making Amazon affiliate commissions from Japan, but, uh, but don't have a way to set up. But hopefully I'll solve that for you in just a minute. Um, for the longest time, this is how we were set up. We would use direct deposit for the US. Uh, we would get paper checks from Canada uh, and the other countries in, uh, in Europe. And then again, as I just mentioned, we would get those uh, Amazon uh, gift certificates for Amazon Japan for all the commissions we earned in Japan. This worked, but it wasn't ideal. Again, not all checks like to deal with uh, foreign currency. So we use Chase, uh, and Chase has some good things, and Chase has some bad things. It is a pain in the butt to deal with Chase Bank in regards to international checks, international currency checks. I would spend a ton of time battling this, and I, I spent a lot of time writing about this as well. So there's a, a blog article that just kind of details the, the, the hours that I would spend in line. Uh, it's usually about an hour each time, but um, it was, it was such a waste. And then you get things like this where they won't actually accept the money. They've got to subtract it from your account. And then a month later, they'll actually put it back into your account after uh, racking up alternative fees, blah, 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 blah. It was a pain in the butt. So we've always been on the lookout for a good solution. I'm really happy to say that this last year, we found a good solution to cover most of the countries you're looking for. So Payoneer, some of you have heard Payoneer. Uh, there's some other, country, other companies uh, that do somewhat similar, but we really like Payoneer, uh, can help you get that direct deposit, that direct payment for all those European countries as well as Australia and Japan. On top of that, I'm also super excited to know or let you know that we also have a solution now for getting money out of India. Um, so let me just run through those real quick for you. So Payoneer is a great tool. Uh, Payoneer, what I like most about them is they allow you to have these uh, receiving accounts. So the gist is that in each of these different countries, so US, Europe, blah, 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 they have different bank accounts. And those bank accounts, they've essentially got set up for you. So when you go up, go into the Amazon Associates programs for each of those different countries, you can then add the information you're looking for for that local bank account. Uh, Matt on our client success team has done a great job document this piece by piece by piece to kind of walk you through. But the gist is now every month when they pay out their affiliate commissions, they're going to pay it out into this Payoneer account. Uh, Payoneer will then send you an email, or sorry, Amazon will send you an email letting you know they paid out. Uh, Payoneer will then send you an email saying they've got it. And then you can then, um, from the Payoneer account, transfer it directly into your bank account. So you don't have to go stand in line at Chase. You just get the money directly into your account. The fees are minimal. It's, it's a great solution. We're super happy with Payoneer. It's done for us. Uh, it's really easy to set up. Uh, it takes a little bit of work again. Uh, you know, give yourself an hour or so. But Matt's instructions step-by-step step are awesome to get there. So uh, if you haven't signed up for Payoneer, please do so. Uh, they have an affiliate program. If you want to click there, uh, we, we appreciate any little bit there. Uh, but also, if, if you are a, um, a YouTuber or an affiliate that talks about the affiliate space, you know, go sign up for Payoneer's affiliate program as well. Um, please please you know, help, help the greater community, the million other publishers out there that need to know this information but haven't yet. 
Uh, and again, Matt's guide on how to set this up, uh, the blog for that is right there as well. It's also in that worksheet, so you can kind of follow along and jump into that. Uh, switching gears a little bit, Q-Links, uh, specifically for, for Amazon and India. Uh, Q-Links is kind of similar to uh, Skimlinks or Viglink, if you're familiar with those tools, where it's a bit of a um, aggregator, uh, a monetization platform per se, uh, but it's really focused on India. So what you can do with Q-Links, instead of signing up for Amazon India, you sign up directly with Q-Links. And Q-Links will actually help you get an Amazon India track ID that's unique to you that you can then add into the Amazon, or sorry, into the Genius Link dashboard. So instead of running directly through Amazon India, you're going to run through Q-Links as a proxy to, to send your clicks into um, Amazon India. Amazon, then Q-Links will uh, collect those commissions for you and will pay you out. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's better to get paid out with Q-Links than not to get paid at all. But unfortunately, uh, Q-Links is, is stuck with some of the challenges that, that make it so hard um, for India to get, sorry, to get money out of India. And one of those is the taxes. So it's really important, again, to be completely transparent that Amazon India, the commissions there, you're probably only gonna see about half that money coming through with the different taxes and fees that come out of that. So again, it's better than nothing, um, but it is gonna be less than, than you're actually seeing kind of in that main dashboard. Um, again, we encourage you to sign up for, for Q-Links and take advantage of this. They have an affiliate program. Uh, again, if you wanna click on that, we'll, we'll get a few cents. Uh, but most importantly, encourage you to check out our step-by-step -step guide. Uh, we walk through piece by piece on how you can leverage the Q-Links piece for Amazon India with your Genius Link account. So all that information is there for you to walk through. Okay, taxes. Um, not a lot of us like to think about taxes. Um, I, I know it's not a, that's something that I enjoy dealing with, even as a, a CEO, as a, as a business leader. Um, so on that note, it's really important to say that it's in, talking, getting a professional and talking to a professional is the best advice that I can possibly give. Uh, we had the, uh, the chance to work with the, uh, the CPA that helps us with all of our taxes. She helped us write, write up a great blog post um, talking about how to get uh, the international, how to deal with international taxes. And the gist is, as an affiliate that's focused here in the US, there's really nothing you have to do with because the US has uh, trade agreements, trade treaties with all these different countries. So again, it's something you should probably pay attention to, probably talk to, a, or definitely talk to a tax professional. But at the end of the day, it's, uh, it's pretty simple. You really don't have to do anything differently. But if this is an area of encouragement or interest, definitely check out that, that blog. I think you'll find some good information. Okay, and the last last little bit of section, um, we talked about early on, you know, does this make sense for you to, to explore this? Does, does Genius Link make sense for you, um, et cetera? At the end of the day, after you've driven some clicks through, I think it's really important for you to do an ROI analysis. Are you seeing a return on investment for using our service? If you're not, you're not gonna hurt my feelings. We know this service isn't for everyone but we really want to make sure that we're adding value. And the best way in a numbers to numbers approach is to look at that. Um, and maybe you're not just using us for Amazon Associates, so it's a little bit more complicated, but if you're just using us to get, take advantage of, of your revenue internationally, this ROI analysis is good. So hypothetical example here, if you have 10,000 clicks coming through, coming through from these other countries, let's say from you know, approximately 40% is coming from the US, you make $80 off that, you make this other money from these other countries, you know, at the end of the day, you're making about $100 internationally. The quick ROI analysis will show that you made $100 extra. It cost you $20. Bucks, $100 minus $20 divided by that $20 that you paid. You've got a 4x ROI. You're seeing that for every dollar you invest in Genius Link, you're getting $4 out. That's the type of thing we want to see. If you're not seeing at least a 2.5x ROI, please talk to us. Maybe something's not set up correctly. Uh, maybe there's a, a quick optimization we can do. But at the end of the day, we want to make sure that when you're using our service, you're making a whole lot more money than you're spending on it. And that's super important to us. We want you to be able to make sure that you're taking care of that user experience. We want to make sure that money is being made and it's getting into your bank account. And at the end of the day, if those things are happening, we're happy. You should be happy as well. Yeehaw. Okay. I'm going to take a quick drink and take a, a quick breather. And I want to hear some of those questions. We have, what, one minute left. We can definitely go long. But what are some of those questions? Uh, it looks like I've got a few in here. Um, Awesome. Okay. Um, first of all, thank you all for, for listening through that. It, it warms my heart that you just spent nearly an hour listening to me blab on and on and on about all the random nuances of the Amazon affiliate program. Uh, it, it feels good to get this off my chest. Obviously, I write about this a fair amount, but you know, being able to talk about it and have these conversations is, is really important to me. It energizes me. It gets me excited. Thank you for listening. 
Okay, Faye has a question that you guys didn't have an answer for. Uh oh, you're trying to stump me. Okay. Um, okay, so you have uh, the question is I have an associate's account in the US as well as some in Europe, and they also have one in Canada. Uh, can they, they recently deactivated you due to not earning commissions the last 180 days? Should you or can you appeal this? Um, so th that the first question is, it's not worth appealing. It's just create a new account. Um, Amazon is well aware of this. If you've rectified the problem, they have no problem with you creating a new account. It's often much more of a challenge to get them to, to turn on an account, and I think that's by, by design. It's much easier just to, to create a new account, go into your Genius Link dashboard, uh, delete your old Amazon Canada tracking IDs and put in new Amazon Canada tracking IDs, um, and then all your links will automate or up, automatically update, and you're good to go. Uh, that being said, though, if you're not um, getting sales in Canada, it's important to look at that traffic you're getting from Canada. What percentage of your traffic is coming from Canada? It may not make sense to actually have a Canadian program. If you see 1% of your sales coming from Canada, maybe, maybe that doesn't make sense. Maybe it's not worth the time. Maybe it's not worth the hassle. Um, Maybe it's worth spending some time if you buy ads or if you can kind of focus your marketing towards Canadians, then, then do that first and then the, the traffic uh, will start to come and then you can monetize it. But don't, don't spend a lot of time uh, if you're not making any money. If you didn't get those 180, or any sales in 180 days, yeah, I, I would encourage you to, to focus on other things for a little bit. Go back and check your, your traffic to, to Canada. Uh, via your Genius Link account, and if it's a decent amount, then go ahead and, and set that back up, add the affiliate tracking ID, and you can start monetizing. Um, okay, if you direct traffic to a landing page with Amazon links, do you still need to include Amazon uh, links that are in the affiliate and the YouTube co um, comments? So that's, that's a great question. So if you have a link on your YouTube description, and that goes to a landing page, and then from the landing page, you need to go to Amazon, uh, do you need to mention that that's going to Amazon on the original page? It doesn't hurt, but it's not necessary. Um, you know, this isn't this isn't an instance where you need to say you're going to Amazon because you're actually going to that landing page, and from that landing page, uh, if it's a choice page, it's incredibly obvious that they're going to go to Amazon. You know, the disclaimer's there. It's an Amazon logo, etc. Uh, but if if you're going to any other landing page, it's typically that that place of the last click, uh, the, the last hop before you send someone on, is where you want to disclose that it's uh, an affiliate link and that they're going to Amazon. So again. I'm always in favor of being more transparent, but technically, no, you do not need to disclose on your YouTube page or in your YouTube description that uh, you're going to Amazon via a landing page. Just do that on the landing page and you should be golden. Okay, is it enough to add a disclaimer that you're using uh, Amazon affiliate links and the terms and conditions of the site? Um, great question. Technically, Maybe I would encourage you to, to go overboard on this. Um, we, as you've probably seen, we're all about transparency. I, I think it's much better to, to mention um, you know, on the page somewhere, somewhat more obvious that it's there. Um, it's, uh, it, it's your discretion. It's, it's your interpretation of the Amazon uh, Associates Agreement. Again, we've read it time and time again. We've written about it time and time again. We've talked to Amazon about it time and time again. Um, but everyone is going to be slightly different, and the people at Amazon, you know, there's there's different account managers, different client success people. They're going to interpret things differently. So at the end of the day, it's it's your call. That's definitely one of the gray area things, etc. Uh, okay, on Amazon Australia terminated my account because Amazon affiliate program Australia program is currently available is not currently available to foreign vendors. Um, interesting. We've we've uh, heard that a couple times before. We also uh, our account is is just fine. Uh, they they yeah, we're going to pass out as well. So. Um, Amazon Australia is brand new. They launched it in May. Uh, I know that there is a, um, a trade agreement between U.S. and uh, Australia, which should make uh, payout of commissions easy. But it, because it is so new, they may need to work out some kinks. So uh, we we may be given a special case in this example. I'm I'm not sure, uh, but that's that's interesting to say. Good for you for trying. Uh, I would definitely encourage you to try again in another month or two, especially if you have significant Amazon Australia traffic. Um, so sorry to hear that you, you got eliminated from that program. But um, again, good for you for being proactive in trying that. Uh, we've definitely had people that have no problem with that. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have a good answer for you on that one. Sorry, Frank. Uh, good questions. What else can I answer for you? <laughs> Absolutely, Frank. Um, so let me do one more of these and then... <laughs> Uh, one more of these, and then you're always welcome to hit us up with answer or, or questions uh, via the intercom. We've got some awesome uh, client success people here. Uh, also, you're, you're welcome to 
uh, jump on our Facebook. We have a, a, a private Facebook community. Uh, please join that if you haven't already. That's a great place for questions. Uh, email as well. Uh, we, again, want to make you better marketers. We want to help you start earning revenue uh, and make you more successful. And we think that answering questions is, uh, is a great way to do that. Um, so has GeniusLink done research on where on the page to put an affiliate link to optimize revenue? So we have not. Um, we understand that there's a lot of different ways to optimize for clicks, and that's we typically focus on the link translation and international aspects of that. Uh, there's an awesome group of people over at um, Human Proof uh, Designs. Um, uh, Mario, maybe you want to drop the link into that group. Those guys are awesome at this sort of thing, You know, really kind of building out those niche sites, optimizing the niche sites, et cetera. Uh, we, we have really kind of focused our expertise in, again, the link translation link piece of it, um, not necessarily the, the human, or sorry, the, um, the page optimization piece. So I would definitely encourage you to ask that same question uh, over there, and I'm, I'm sure they can give you some great information. Awesome. Um, so again, uh, we have some takeaways for you. The webinar recording, as soon as we're done with that, um, we'll get that uh, up at this link right now. It goes to, I think, just an empty folder. Uh, these slides should be available for you. Please uh, go ahead and download them. I will fix that issue with the comment, uh, the sticky on the, the earlier slide. Uh, also, that worksheet, again, I uh, encourage you to just download that and, and create a copy and, and you know, kind of work through. There's a ton of different links to different support articles, to just different articles around, to other resources. Uh, there's a lot of information there. I hopefully left some notes. Uh, but ultimately, you know, your feedback, your comments, again, are super important to us. Um, again, we don't know what we don't know, the good, bad, and the ugly. Uh, if you enjoyed yourself, awesome, really appreciate the kind words. If you had frustrations, that's super important to us as well. Uh, we aim to make this better, we aim to, to help people, so your feedback can help us do exactly that. Uh, again, we don't know what we don't know, so please let us know how we can do better. So, uh, a huge thank you all again. Really, really appreciate your time and spending with us, um, and uh, look forward to working with you. Um, have an awesome day. Cheers. <laughs>